I am going to divide our sheet of um, mixed media paper using a little bit of masking tape. Now if you don't have masking tape, you don't have to use any. pretty good. Now let's do a little bit more. Let's do a whole bunch of different experiments on here. So let's learn how to use our um, watercolors. Let's play with um, a wash. And a wash means that you're going to do an even layer of color. And so the first thing to do a wash that you want to do is wet the entire area. And while that's wet, you're going to go ahead and grab your color. I'm just going to do blue, which is my very favorite color. And you can see that while it's still wet, I can make a very even field of color. Now, if I want to go from one color into another, say like if I'm doing a sky or a soft gradation, say I'm going to go from a violet to a pink, because I'm going to be doing a, a um, kind of sunset thing here. And I'm going to add more water and more water. And now I'm going to come in with my other color. And so if I wanted to just have a graded wash, that's how you would do it. But now if I want to come in with my other color, So this is working wet into wet from one color gradating to the other. Let's come back around with the purple. Going down this way. Now if like what happening here I have too much color pooling. I can make my brush thirsty by squeezing out the color and picking up the excess water. And now this is going to happen. It's watercolor. This is going to happen and our paper is very thin. It's not your typical watercolor paper. It's a mixed media paper and it's thin. So you're going to get some of this buckling that happens. Uh, so let's see how else can we use wet and wet. How about if I form say for example I'm doing an orange and I want to show that it's got little speckles of another color in it. can have my color blend wet into wet. It's too wet there. Flooping into one. Let's see what happens if I take some, this is regular alcohol, 
just isopropyl alcohol, which we often have in our medicine cabinet. And now if I put a drop of alcohol, do you see what happens? It repels my color. This is another way I can get. Let's see, let's grab a really dark color. So you can see it well. See it working. Doesn't work as well unless your color is dark. You can't see how it repelled it. Let's go real dark. Do you see that? So that's using isopropyl alcohol. Let's do another experiment using household materials. And this time we're going to drop salt into our color. And this is just regular salt that you will have. And now this, you won't really see the effect until it's dry. So it's, you have to be patient. We'll see that at the end. Let's see what lifting off looks like. So I can use a paper towel to lift off and get some really soft textures. And this comes in very handy if you're doing um, clouds, for example. On a leaf or on a design, do you see how it really incised the incised lines? And you see the difference between the incised lines when I did them dry to when I'm doing it while the color is wet. And again, so can you imagine if I was doing an aquatic looking, how I can get my scraffito in there. Um, this with my lightest color, yellow. And then I'm going to come back to it and glaze because it has to be dry. Okay. Dry brush works when your brush is fairly dry and you pick up some paint. And see how my brush is almost like spread out with paint. And so this works really great. Again, if you're doing hair or something really textural, you need your brush to be quite dry. And you can layer that paint on top. Do a glaze around my sun here. Oh, it's quite wet still. Well, you know, this is fairly dry, so why don't I do a little bit of glazing on here so you can see what that looks like. I'm going to make my paint nice and transparent. And once a color is dry underneath, 
I can layer transparent color on top. This is nope, that's still wet. I'm gonna do my splatter over here. So to splatter, I can just hit my finger over an area and I can also, it works really well with a toothbrush. Um, so this is not a toothbrush, but it's pretty stiff brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of this paint and you can see how it would work with a toothbrush. And you can almost simulate. And this works really well if you cut out a stencil. So let's make a little stencil here. I'm going to use this bit of tape as a stencil. And let's make a dark green splatter around it. So you can cut out a piece of paper or cardboard in a shape that you want. And then pull it up. and you have your splatter. So that's using stenciling, splatter, and then a stencil um, to really see how that might work. So say for example, I'm doing a, a night scene. in the park, show that my tree has parts that are darker and parts that are lighter. So once the color underneath dries, you can come in and start shifting that color with the colors that you put on top. So that's a glaze on top of one. We were gonna try to do a little bit of splatter here to make it look like a, um, let me find another, like a little field of flowers. All right, artists, so here's some of the ways that we used our watercolor. We wet the section and blended the color for an even layer, and that's called a wash. A graded wash is when you start with one color and you make it from darker to lighter. In this case, we went from purple to white, and then we added pink and went up to the purple, and so we were able to get a nice graded wash here wet into wet, blended here. We did wet and wet where we dropped, it's still wet, where we drop a color into another. Here we used alcohol in it and my salt went into my alcohol and you can see what the salt did is it left little tiny dark and white starbursts and the alcohol left almost like little crater marks uh, as it repelled my color, a little blotted. So we went in, did our wash of dark green, and then we blotted out to get soft gradations. And then unfortunately, I didn't wait until it was fully dry before I splattered my little red poppies on it. And so they're starting to blend. Did a dry brush by drying my brush, dipping it in the paint and spreading it out. I can get very textural linear elements and then I can also splatter my brush with paint to create 
these fields of dots and I can use that splatter with stencils. Any kind of paper that you cut, you can use. So these are just some of the ways in which you can use your um, little watercolor set to create a variety of techniques. Remember with Scraffito, we have drawing while the paper is dry and then drawing while the paper is wet with paint. And we can get different kinds of linear elements and textures into, there's my salt, see what it did? The alcohol and the splatters. So all these different techniques that you can use to create a variety of effects.